we'll talk about systems of linear equations, the theoretical aspect of them. But first, let's review some properties of ranks of matrices. Let's assume that A is an M by N matrix, and let's let R denote its rank. Then R is never greater than M, the number of rows, or N, the number of columns. Next, we can find matrices B and C such that B times A times C is a particularly nice matrix. That is, the matrix has zeros everywhere except for R, ones, along the diagonal. Here, we can think of R as forming an identity, the I R is forming an R by R identity matrix. Both A and its transpose have the same rank. That is, the rank of AT is equal to the rank of A. Let's say that we have two matrices A and B, such that the product B times A exists and is defined. Then the rank of the product B times A is never more than the rank of A or the rank of B. That is, the rank of B times A is less than or equal to the rank of A and is less than or equal to the rank of B. Something similar can be said if we have two linear transformations T and U. Again, if T and U are defined such that the composition U circle T makes sense, then the rank of the composition is less than or equal to T and is less than or equal to U. We'd like to explain how all of this is useful in solving a system of linear equations. Say that we have a system of M equations and N unknowns. We'll visibly write the system as follows and we'll denote this by capital S. You'll see here that we're trying to solve for the variables x1, x2 through x sub n, and we have m equations. We can write this system S as a single equation, a times x equals b, once we invoke the following matrices. Here a is an m by n matrix that just consists of the coefficients a, i, j on the left of the equal signs. Here, x is an n-dimensional vector, which really just consists of the variables we're trying to solve for. And b consists of the scalars that are on the right-hand side of the equal sign. We'll make a few definitions about this system of linear equations. A vector is said to be a solution if this vector lowercase s satisfies a times lowercase s equals b. The collection of all such vectors, lowercase s, will be called the solution set to this system, capital S. We'll say that our system, capital S, is consistent if there exists at least one solution, lowercase s. Otherwise, we'll say that our system is inconsistent. We'll say that our system is homogeneous, or even homogeneous, if the right-hand side of the equal signs are all equal to zero. That is, if our vector b is the zero vector. Otherwise, we'll say that our system, capital S, is inhomogeneous or inhomogeneous. Here are a few properties. Let's say that we do have a system, capital S, which we'll write in the form a times x equals b, that consists of m linear equations and n unknowns. We'll denote capital V as the collection of n-dimensional vectors and capital W as the collection of m-dimensional vectors. Recall that n is the number of columns of A, this is the number of variables, and m is the number of rows of A, this is the number of equations. To start, let's denote K sub H as the set of solutions for the homogeneous system A times S equals the zero vector. We want k sub h just to be a collection of solutions here. Then k sub h is the null space for the linear transformation L sub a, which is literally left multiplication by our matrix A. In particular, k sub h is a subspace of our vector space V, and the dimension of this subspace is n minus the rank of our matrix A. Next, let's assume for the moment 
that m is less than n. That is, we have more variables than we do equations. Then there exists a non-zero solution to the homogeneous equation a times x equals the zero vector. By non-zero, we mean that there is a vector s where not all of the components of s are zero. Next, let's let capital K denote the set of solutions to our system capital S. We'll say for the moment that our system capital S is consistent and let's denote lowercase s sub zero as one solution to our system. Then we can express all solutions to our system in the form lowercase s is our lowercase s zero plus k, where lowercase k is in the set capital K sub h coming from the very first part of the proposition. In particular, let's say that m equals n. That is, the number of equations is equal to the number of unknowns. Then our system, capital S, has exactly one solution, S0, if and only if A is an invertible n by n matrix. Let's discuss the proofs of these statements. We'll start by showing the first statement by discussing the set K sub H. Recall that by definition, K sub H is the set of solutions to our homogeneous equation, A times X equals the zero vector. But A times X really is the same as the left multiplication by A on a vector X. So really, K sub H is just the null space of our left multiplication by A in disguise. Since we know that we have the null space, we know that it is a subspace of V, and therefore its dimension is just the nullity of left multiplication by A. The dimension theorem tells us that the rank plus nullity is the dimension of our vector space V, so putting all of this together, we do and see, indeed see that the dimension of our K sub H is N minus the rank of our matrix A. Let's focus on the second statement, where M is less than N. Let's say by way of contradiction that we only have one solution to the equation a times x equals the zero vector, namely that solution is s is equal to the zero vector of v. Then n is greater than m by our assumption, but we know that the rank of a is less than or equal to m, and we know by definition that the rank of a is the rank of left multiplication by a. But according to the dimension theorem, rank plus nullity is n, so we see now that n must be greater than n minus the nullity of left multiplication by a. However, we said before that we were assuming there's only one solution to a times x equals the zero vector. This means that k sub h only has one element in it, namely this solution. So the nullity must be zero. So we actually find n is greater than n, which is a contradiction. Hence, our original assumption must have been false. So we see that there must indeed exist a solution to a times x equals zero, other than the solution s equals the zero vector. Let's focus on the third statement, which involves this funny set capital K. We'll fix a solution, lowercase s zero, to our system a times x equals b, and let's define two sets. First, we'll define capital K as the set of solutions to our system capital S, and we'll define this funny set here, S0 plus capital K sub H, as just the collection of vectors in the form S0 plus lowercase k, where lowercase k is in capital K sub H. We want to show that these two sets are equal, so we must show two different directions. The left-hand side is contained in the right-hand side, and the right-hand side is contained in the left-hand side. Let's first show that the left-hand side is contained in the right-hand side. We'll pick an element, lowercase s, that is in capital K, and let's take a look at the difference. Lowercase k is lowercase s minus lowercase s zero. 
Remember that lowercase s0 is just one solution for our system a times s equals b. Then by applying L sub a to this element k, we see that we find b minus b, or simply put, we find that a times lowercase k must be zero. So in particular, lowercase k must be in our set capital K sub h, so we do find that our lowercase s is indeed in the form lowercase s zero plus lowercase k, where our lowercase k is in capital K sub h. This does indeed give us one containment. Now we'd like to show the other containment. To this end, let's pick an element lowercase s that is in the set s0 plus capital K sub h. Just like before, if we apply capital A to s, then we'll find b plus the zero element in w. So in particular, lowercase s must be a solution to our system capital S, showing that lowercase s is indeed in our set capital K. This allows us to conclude that we do have equality of these two sets. Finally, let's show the last statement where m is equal to n, and we'd like to know how this is related to invertible matrices. First, let's assume that our m by n matrix A is indeed an invertible matrix. This means, of course, that our left multiplication by A is an invertible linear transformation, so it has an inverse that we'll denote by capital U. We'll use this to show that our system capital S has a unique solution, S sub zero. First, we'll show that there exists at least one solution by writing S zero as U of our vector B. Then, by simply applying A to S zero, and using some properties about the inverse u, we find that a times s0 must be our right-hand side of the equation, b. So this means that s0 is indeed one solution to our system, capital S. Now we'll show uniqueness. Let's say that s0 is any other solution to our system, capital S. Then by simply playing around, by saying, for example, that s1 is equal to the identity map on S1, and then using the fact that our identity map is simply U composed left multiplication by A, we can finally substitute that A times S1 equals B is the same as A times S0 equals B, and work backwards to see that S1 is indeed equal to S0. So this does mean that we have at most one solution to our system, capital S. We've now shown that if A is invertible, then our solution, our system, capital S, has a unique solution, S0. Conversely, we're going to prove that A must be invertible if there is a unique solution. Theorem 3.3 says that A is invertible if and only if M equals N, that is, the number of rows equals the number of columns, and the rank of A equals N. Let's assume by way of contradiction that the rank of A does not equal N. Let's denote P as the rank of this space K sub H. Recall that this will simply be the nullity of our matrix A. And let's say that we have a basis for this null space, which we'll write as U1, U2 through U sub P. Well, we know that there is at least one solution S0 to our system, capital S. Because we have P vectors, U1, U2 through U sub P, in our null space, then we'll denote SI as S0 plus each of the UIs. There are now P more vectors. And we see that these new P vectors give us a total of at least P plus one solutions to our system, capital S. This contradicts the assumption that our system, capital S, has at most one solution, S0, so our assumption that the rank of A does not equal N must indeed be false. We conclude that our matrix A is indeed an invertible N by N matrix. Before we end the lesson, we'd like to make a final remark about the statement of what happens when M does not equal N, do we still have a unique solution? 
Well, for the fourth statement, we really don't need this assumption that m equals n. Indeed, if A is an invertible matrix, then we already know that our system capital S will have a unique solution. But let's consider the following example where A is not an invertible matrix. In particular here, we'll write down a matrix that has four rows and three columns. This is a four by three matrix. Because here M is different from N, we see that A cannot be an invertible matrix but if we stare at what this represents, then we see that actually there is at most one solution S0. However, this system may not even have one solution. Indeed, this system is inconsistent if and only if B0 does not equal zero. So we see now here's an example where we have at most one solution, but we may actually have zero solutions. Thanks for watching.